Good morning, America. Or should I say good evening, America? <laughs> I got my time zones mixed up here. We got good morning, Philippines. You can see it's a great day out here. And good evening, America. And so I thought I'd reach out to my uh, expats in the Philippines as well as the future expats maybe in America and talk a little bit about budget. I know there's always big questions uh, about budget and what you can live on in the Philippines. And I kind of threw that $500 out to get people attracted to the live stream. And so hopefully some people will show up and we can discuss, you know, what it actually it cost. And we, you know, I've been to the Philippines before, you know, 10 years ago when I married my wife uh, and got kind of an inkling or an idea of what it would cost to live in the Philippines. And then of course uh, we moved here a couple of months ago. So I would think that, you know, after a couple of months, I have a, a pretty good understanding of, you know, what actually it would take uh, to live in the Philippines uh, full time uh, if you decided ever to relocate to the Philippines. So I know that there's a lot of interest out there. So let's, you know, get into the nitty gritty of it. You know, there seems to be, uh, you know, kind of two expats or, you know, a lot of them are coming over and they're moving uh, to Dumaguete or Cagayan de Oro or Cebu. They're moving into these province areas where a lot of vloggers uh, have set up uh, recently, maybe in the last five years. And a lot of them went out there because the price was really, really cheap. Um, if you kind of lived uh, local style, uh, you could live really cheaply. And I would say you probably could live for 500 a month very, very cheaply. Um, of course, that excludes, you know, medical insurance or uh, something like that. But I think really, really, you could live there relatively cheaply, especially with the food costs and the rent costs. If you weren't looking for so much of a Western style, uh, you know, in, in your real estate or your apartment or house or however you were looking at things, if you're willing to live in more of a local style and you can downsize, you know, relatively uh, without any bothersome to yourself, then you could really, really live very cheaply in the Philippines. But it's not going to be, you know, what maybe you're used to in America or even in Europe. And there's kind of different expectations in Europe and America, too. I think in Europe, most Europeans are used to living maybe uh, what Americans would consider, you know, in small houses, small refrigerators, small cars. Um, Americans want something a little bit bigger. Uh, especially if they're accustomed to that. Some people can adjust and some people can't. I mean, that's really the name of the game. And if you can adjust relatively easily and downsize to a room or to a studio, that kind of opens up a whole new ball game for you. Uh, you can get something really cheap, probably in a couple hundred dollar area uh, in, a safe, in a safe place. I mean, you can get so, for instance, like here, um, I'm in BGC, your global beneficio city, which is one of the prime areas uh, for people that, you know, uh, Filipinos, middle class Filipinos, upper middle class, and also for expats. And we're paying $600 for a two bedroom condo, which by U.S. standards is really cheap. And you can, I don't know if you can, if I move my head here, you can get just a tiny glimpse of the pool area. I mean, this is kind of like a resort style condo. We've got a basketball court. We also have a pavilion. You can just see it uh, out of the corner of the view screen for $600. Uh, really, really uh, cheap. And the security is unmatched. I mean, we have guards all over the place. They always uh, escort people to our door before they let them in. Uh, that's delivery people as well as guests if we don't go down there and kind of meet them at the gate. Uh, and this is part of a bigger complex. So you have, an, uh, you know, sort of a guardhouse at the beginning of the complex and then also at each uh, neighborhood or subdivision within the complex. So, I mean, and the guards are super nice. You know, they're, you know, they're really, really nice guys. And they escort people and they walk around the grounds. And it's really been, quite frankly, a great experience. And that's for $600 a month. Um, and, I mean, considering where I was living in the past in the U.S., at least in condos, the people act really well. I mean, of course, there's always a little bit of noise here and there. But for the most part, people really you know, respect the laws and the guards are really on top of it. And right now, the pool, 
it's a great pool right behind me. Um, you know, they, they keep it very clean and they, and they make people obey the rules. Um, and unlike America, you're not going to have too many people fighting with the guards or the attendant, you know, saying I can do whatever I want or whatever. So pretty much when people say something, it's wrong. They just kind of say, okay, and they accept it and they kind of go off. But, um, you know, for, that's, that's $600. I mean, so if I would say if this were in the U S depending on what state it would be, you know, at least 1500 to $2,000. That's my opinion. Uh, maybe more. Uh, I know in Texas and some places in the South, you get something a little bit uh, cheaper than on the East Coast or maybe even in Florida. But this is a, a kind of a premier place. Uh, and we also have a supermarket down the street. We also have water because in the Philippines, you don't really want to drink the tap water. Uh, in the U.S., you want to drink the tap water too? I mean, I'm not really sure uh, anymore. But, um, you know, they have a water uh delivery thing where you get like those office water jugs um and that's really cheap i think it's like less than a dollar for you know a whole big bottle of water and they deliver we also have a supermarket but we'll talk about that a little you know it's a great supermarket but it is a little expensive and uh we have a gym located on the grounds in each subdivision as well that's twenty dollars you know it's a nice gym i think it could be a little less uh than 20 but um you know, and, you know, you could go someplace else across the street, for instance, and get a bigger gym, maybe get more uh, value for your money. But uh, so far right now, the electric bill is like $200. And the food bill, because we just got here, we kept going to the grocery store. And after a month, we were kind of like, whoa. You know, it was like, uh, you know, three to $400. And I wasn't really expecting that. Uh, and then we, my Priscilla went down to the market the other day and she bought pretty much everything, the essentials at the market for like 40 US dollars. And I was like, yeah, this is kind of what I was expecting. We got chicken, fish, pork, vegetables. The only thing you can't really get, you know, are uh, cookies, milk, you know, what well, kind of like, uh, you know, here they might be considered, uh, you know, Western kind of delicacies or extravagant things like you know milk is not very expensive um if you go to kind of like a costco thing which isn't too far from here you can get like a half gallon for like a couple of dollars uh which isn't bad but the cheese and things like that you know are going to be very expensive because they really can't manufacture cheese unless you can find some goat cheese somewhere which we may try to do which they can make fresh i don't know if they even do it anymore in the philippines but that would be something you'd get as goat cheese, but not real uh, dairy cow kind of cheese going on here in Asia too much. Uh, but other than that, I mean, most of the Western products, ex oh, well, the other thing I should say is ground beef. Uh, the ground beef here is not that great by, you know, American standards or something like that. But you, if you, like I said, there is a Costco kind of thing around here called SNR. You can get uh, ground beef for like five or six dollars uh, or organic grass fed. And, you know, part of the reason you come to the Philippines is to get a little healthier eating. So you don't want to keep eating too much red meat. But um, the red meat itself is really good from New Zealand and Australia. I like the New Zealand ground beef. Tastes, you know, it, it, it tastes great. You know, some of the beef we bought in the local supermarket, even though when it said Australia, eh, was kind of fatty. And we also got some burger patties from the U.S. They said from Compton, uh, California. Um, it was okay. But I mean, it, it was kind of expensive. You know, it was like $10 for, I don't know, 10 patties or something. And at that price, you're almost better just having McDonald's delivered. And quite frankly, you can. So for like un under a dollar almost, you can have McDonald's delivered if you want to get your, you know, your burger on, you know, a couple of times a week. So we're looking at like $600 for rent, $200 for electricity. I think we can get our food budget down to like maybe even if we eat out and do all kind and buy some stuff, keep buying milk and cheese and things like that. I don't see it going more than $200. So you're talking right there and, uh, you know, about $1,000 U.S. dollars. And then, of course, water. So the drinking water, we do three of those a week about – 
you know, it's like two dollars, and to, so that's like two four six. That's like maybe twenty bucks if you drink even more. And the water bill itself is like you know, like ten bucks. So I think all in all, if you want the kind of a Western lifestyle, and you're kind of careful, you don't eat out too much and things of like that. You're talking like a thousand U.S. dollars, you know, something along those nature. I think to live comfortably. Now you could, you know, there are cheaper places for sure. If you don't really want to live in an expat zone, or you know, even like we could have gotten a house for the same price we're paying six hundred dollars for, in a nice Filipino subdivision not too far from here, uh, in Marikina, could have got it for five hundred, a whole house for five hundred dollars. I'm not really interested in a house, you know. This this is good for good for me, and I like the security. Although I never feel threatened in the Philippines or anything like that, uh, you know, it, it just gives me peace of mind a little bit. You know, I don't think anything would happen to me in a nice uh, ex, you know, sort of a nice Filipino subdivision. You'd be okay, uh, especially since most of the houses have, you know, uh, what do you call that? Bars on the windows and things like that for their own security. Um, it, you'll be okay. It, it's pretty safe. I know when you say say bars and stuff, it kind of scares people off. But that's kind of the uh, tradition, kind of here in the Philippines, uh, and you know, they, even in some Western countries. You know, I remember going to Italy when I was a kid in the seventies and stuff. They had bars, they had glass on top. You know, that was another day, another place in Italy. But um, you know, just because there's bars and stuff doesn't mean the place is unsafe. It's just sort of the Filipino security system. So, I mean, you could go get a whole house for 500 bucks um, and you could even, you know, get even cheaper than that if you just wanted to live in someone's room. A lot of people rent rooms or even uh, share a room or anything like that. So there's a lot of different options. I mean, seriously, you could live here for $500 if you really wanted to. But I don't know how many U.S. or expats would really kind of like that. But I, I think as a single person, I think you could really do that. Now, as far as a family coming over, I think that would be, uh, you know, much more difficult to do um, unless you're really on a budget. I mean, you could really rent probably uh, a two bedroom, three bedroom apartment probably for like, you know, three, three hundred bucks or something like that. Uh, it's not going to have any frills. It might not have AC or anything like that, but you could do it. I mean, I mean, it's possible to do that here. Um, you know, there's all different options available for all different kinds of budgets. And of course, if you go further out into the province, things will be cheaper, um, you know, than Manila. Uh, so that's why I think a lot of vloggers and those guys went down to uh, Dumaguete and Kagi and the Oro and, uh, and I think, you know, in a way, it's really great because it shows that, you know, there's other places in the Philippines besides the major cities. And then, of course, Cebu. Uh, but, of course, you know, you're going to be kind of outside uh, the main areas. And so you're not going to have access maybe to good Internet. And that's one thing I didn't add is phone and Internet. So, you know, Internet here, if you want top-notch Internet, you know, you're talking like 60 bucks uh, here in uh, Manila. And it's been really fast, 60 up and 60 down. And it's been pretty, pretty, really good, um, especially if you get your own router. Now, I had my router shipped in from the U.S. that was a 5G, you know, 5 gig, gigahertz router, I should say. And it's, it's working pretty well. The one they gave us was only 2.5 gig, gigahertz. So it was a little slower, but um, it was okay. But you don't get the full benefit unless you plug in the Ethernet cord. In this case, you know, since I got the route, the wireless router from the U.S., I had, um, it, it, you know, Netgear, Blackhawk, it, it really worked great. And I had that for a while, so I'm glad I sent it over and uh, kind of taken, you know, utilizing that. Like right now, the stream is great. But, of course, like in any area, you know, in the Philippines or in the U.S., you know, the more people that are online, they're also going to slow down, um, you know, you are um, – the internet. And so like at peak times here, it is going to slow down. And that's what I find around eight o'clock, nine o'clock. And, you know, I, that's also, so night here is going to be, um, you know, daytime, no, no, nighttime in the U. I'm trying to figure this one out here. 
kind of early in the morning. So like, uh, yeah, so nighttime would be morning in the U.S. So I, I think a lot of people are calling the U.S. or calling around the world. There's a lot of people that work overseas here. I think that clogs up the Internet at night. And of course, more people are just at home uh, using the Internet as well. So, I mean, like right now, this thing is streaming perfect and there's no problem. So if we add that to the budget, you know, maybe like 1050 if you want to go out a little bit, $1,100. Um, now, that doesn't include the medical insurance. And that, of course, is purely up to you. Um, you know, you can get travel insurance uh, with various companies for like about 100 bucks. I mean, if you're doing individual, depending on your age, maybe from, I don't know, maybe 30 to like 50 bucks a month, something like that. And that will just cover emergency situations. If you wanted something to cover, you know, other kind of uh, pre-existing medical conditions and other problems, you're going to have to pay a little bit more. But I would say, you know, no more than a hundred bucks if you went to a major insurance company here. If they're going to cover you, uh, maybe something like that. So I mean, um, not you know, for like a thousand, maybe eleven hundred max, you can do pretty well. In the Philippines, if you want a Western lifestyle, of course, if you want something a little cheaper, you can do that too. And it also goes according to you know where you want to live. You know, a lot of people, I don't, you know, I don't know why. I mean, yeah, the, the traffic in Manila is pretty bad, but I think it gets a bum rap. I think New York and LA are worse than Manila, to be honest with you. And people just like you know the um, locals as well as people that visit. Oh, I can't handle the traffic and. Hey, it's no different than New York City at rush hour or something like that. It's the same thing. Um, and you just kind of learn to live with it if you want to live in an urban kind of, you know, more sophisticated environment that has everything, you know, kind of going for you here with medical care and better electric. Because in a lot of places in the Philippines, your electricity is going to go out. You know, it's going to brown out in a lot of, a lot of cases. Uh, in Manila, you're going to get brownouts, but they're going to fix it quicker. Um, and that's, you know, kind of the reason I like Manila is that if there is kind of a natural disaster or a problem, I mean, you have access to things. I think further out in the province, you're going to get, you know, um, more difficulty if there's a natural disaster or, you know, how uh, utilities are handled or Internet or phone. I mean, you know, for newer, you know, for younger people, uh, you know, when the, their phone goes out, they kind of freak out and go crazy. I mean. I'm still, I mean, I'm old enough to remember where we didn't have phones. So that doesn't really bother me as much. Now, the internet is kind of a big deal for me because we're trying to get this channel started. Uh, it would be nice also when you talk back home to save on the phone bill. So, I mean, things like that are kind of, um, uh, you know, kind of essential, I think, you know, but I mean, how essential they are really depends up to you and how, and how much you need them. Um, as you know, as well as other things like, you know, but to me, like I was going to say, you know, AC, I mean, I think for a Western person or someone coming from the U S you know, AC, especially maybe not in the rainy season, but in the summer heat season, that's coming up the dry season, it's going to be pretty intense, uh, as far as humidity and sweat and everything like that. It's, it's pretty nasty stuff. So, I mean, you're going to really, really have to kind of, uh, you know, take a look at that and, uh, you know, see see what's going on. But, you know, the, the electric, if you have one bedroom and you turn it on, you know, very low, you're not really spending that much on electricity. Uh, but, you know, the Philippines does have expensive electric. But I've lived in places with more expensive, like Hawaii, which is really expensive. If we were doing it here, I'd be paying like 400 bucks a month instead of two. So, I mean, even though I think the electric in, you know, in the Philippines is relatively expensive compared to other parts of Asia, uh, it's cheaper than some places in the U.S., but also more expensive than some places. But like New Jersey, New York, and I don't know, other like California, uh, you're paying uh, maybe more for electric than you would here. So, I mean, you know, overall, pretty good experience with the electric and the infrastructure so far. And that, like I said, that's why I like Manila. If you're going to have a typhoon come through or anything like that, Manila is going to get up and running pretty fairly quickly. And a lot of buildings have their own generators as well. So that's something you can look at if you buy, 
in a tower situation like a condo. I mean, rent it, rent in one of those places. I know all the hotels, the hospitals, everybody here, even houses have their own generators in case there's a brownout or, uh, you know, something of that nature uh, coming up. So those are all kinds of things you can take into consideration for your budget. I know there's a lot of older men in particular, but now we're getting younger men as well that, um, you know, kind of a new lifestyle where the nine to five where you get one job and you have a family. Um, a lot of people are bailing on the U.S. right now um, with the cost of living, the cost of relationships and, and everything going on. And they're looking for happiness, I, I would think in most cases, and they're not really getting it in the U.S. I don't know too many, um, you know, younger or older women actually moving to the Philippines. That would be really interesting to, to see if there are, but it's mainly men. Um, and they're they mainly finding Filipina girlfriends and wives, and they're, they're pretty content uh, for the most part. And there are some challenges here, surely. Uh, depending on your uh, budget, you know, what, you know, your finances, things of that nature. And um, you just have to take that into consideration as well as your needs. And a lot of people, you know, have been moving into the Mindanao area, uh, the southern Philippines, as opposed to before, where it was mainly, uh, you know, Luz uh, Luzon that people were moving into, or even Cebu. So it's kind of interesting to see how YouTube, I think YouTube has really affected um, a lot of, you know, uh, decision making. You see a lot of people going on YouTube and seeing a lot of people in Dumaguete, for instance, and they go, hey, oh, well, there's a lot of Americans. I'm going to check it out. And there's a lot, there's a huge expat group, you know, that are that is going down. Um, you know, I think I get a little more bright there, um, you know, going going into Dumaguete. And that's great. You got your support system. Um, you know, I don't really need much of a support system because I have my family. I have my wife. So that really doesn't, you know, bother me per se. But, uh, you know, you know, for people moving over for the first time, I could see how, you know, that could be a really big deal. And then they have people to talk to and kind of help out. And I can see them helping each other out. Uh, kind of like an extended family out there in Dumaguete. So that's, that's really, a, you know, kind of a great thing uh, that they have going on out there. And if they feel comfortable, I know that you know, I've, I've watched as well a lot of the budgets coming out of Dumaguete. It's a little cheaper than Manila. I think there's, you know, spending between four and $500 and, or even in Cebu for maybe a one-bedroom condo. Um, but you can get a studio as well. But they're paying something like that depending on the situation. And there seems to be, you know, sort of a huge increase uh, in these sort of expat or even foreign condo um, communities that are sprouting up uh, all over the Philippines, these developments that, you know, we're seeing in uh, the Mindanao area, Cebu, uh, Luzon. And it's attracting a lot of uh, foreigners, not just U.S., uh, but people throughout Asia, uh, you know, coming to the Philippines for the first time. And I think that's relatively new for the Philippines. Um, a lot of, it wasn't really a destination for a lot of people for a long time, but now it is. And uh, I, I think the vloggers have, you know, some uh, degree of importance in sort of bringing people's attention to the Philippines as an option for living. And really giving this information out. And I think they've really popularized sort of the, you know, the more provincial areas of the Philippines as before it was really mainly Manila, maybe Subic Bay. A lot of military guys were moving into Subic Bay uh, area, the ex-military areas and staying there. Um, but now we're seeing a branching out even from uh, from Cebu. Uh, people are moving to different areas and, and sort of uh, embracing that. And, you know, a lot of people are also going back and forth where, you know, they go back to the U.S. for a few months and come back from the Philippines, um, you know, get their U.S. Uh, on, you know, uh, go back and visit, say hello. And I think a lot of expats do that at least once a year. And I think, you know, some go back for medical checkups or they go back and take care of some business and they come back, you know, to the Philippines. And there's a lot that are kind of living in the middle 
that are looking for a girlfriend or what have you and trying to you know, test the waters a little bit to see if they would like to come out here full time or go back to the Philippines. And I think there is also a little uh, apprehension of uh, marrying because, you know, especially for, oh, but even for, you know, uh, middle aged or even older U.S. men that have been divorced are really scared of losing all their property. Um, and so, you know, in the divorce, if they brought the girl back to the U.S., uh, they could lose all their property. I don't even know if they're married in the Philippines, if they can make claim on U.S. property. I have no idea. But um, it's, it's kind of a very interesting thing going on. I think it's only increasing because the U.S., not only, you know, the budget for the U.S. is just, you know, how much does it cost? And there are really no good jobs in the U.S. like there used to be. Uh, to really satisfy all these uh, economic needs, especially in healthcare, um, people are spending all their money on healthcare because if you don't, you're going to be bankrupt or not not being taken care of. So it's really kind of a really bad situation a lot of Americans are in, and they're just working more and more and more uh, and trying to keep a relatively American style. Uh, lifestyle, middle class lifestyle, I should say, and it's becoming increasingly harder and harder to do. Uh, and that ne never mind all the other things in life that that crop up from time to time, and the stress is just really, really uh, coming to a to a head. And there doesn't seem to be any solutions uh, as far as the you know. Everyone says you know that the uh, the Trump economy or the U.S. economy is doing great. I have to say it really isn't. I, I just, you know, when I left the U.S. a couple of months ago, I didn't see the jobs. You know, I just really didn't see those jobs, even for bank teller jobs or kind of low level paying jobs. I really, really uh, didn't see that happening. And so um, I just don't see the economy really doing that well. Uh, for the middle class at all, and even just for the college graduates coming out. So you see a lot of people, you know, and that was that was me as well. I was like, you know, what are we doing here? We're going crazy. We're running like a dog chasing its tail. You know, why don't we just take an, a new look at this and maybe we can go to the Philippines and we're finding younger people as well working on YouTube, working online. And, you know, so I hope this kind of, you know, this video gave at least some idea of what it would cost uh, to move to the Philippines. Now, of course, this isn't taken into account visa, your airline ticket over here, uh, things of that nature. Um, but I mean, the, the, the basic expenses, I mean, if you want, I mean, a one bedroom condo in a, in a nice area, maybe you get it for 400 bucks. I mean, a studio here for $400, uh, maybe four to five. And, you know, with that, the electric would go down. I mean, you're probably like talking 700 bucks a month. And you see a lot of people teaching English online that can obviously do that. Um, now, there are some challenges with the healthcare system. Not that there isn't healthcare available. There is and not really that expensive. Um, but, um, if, you know, if, as you're getting older, like myself, if you, of course, if you're talking about, you know, sort of, uh, you know, more complicated medical situations, yeah, it's going to be expensive. Uh, maybe, you know, you want to, you know, ten, twelve thousand dollars maybe, something like that. Something really bad would cost, you know, uh, $20,000. So, I mean, this, this is kind of a problem. Uh, the travel insurance will pay for emergency situations, but not for something like cancer or something uh, chronic. So that's something that you really have to think about. Now, we can, on another video, we can go through that because I'll be in the process of uh, getting Phil Health and all that stuff and figuring out the uh, medical situation. But um, that's kind of what you're, you're working with here. And most Filipinos kind of handle that on a, on a need basis. They don't really kind of prepare for it. But I think like if you're younger and you have travel insurance, I think you're okay. I think if, you know, I'm kind of on the cusp of that, I think I'm okay, uh, you know, with the travel insurance for a while. But, um, you know, as time goes on, I might get something a little more permanent with an insurance company here or, or, or something of that nature with Phil Health kind of helping out a little bit and also keeping money in reserve. So, I mean, I think you want, I mean, like I said, adding on like at least $140 here to the travel insurance and maybe getting uh, something else 
that could also fill that catastrophic gap. But for right now, we're doing great. Uh, we're working out the budget, like I said. Uh, I think, you know, you could do it for 1000 to $1,100, $1,200 if you have a little bit more, you know, you're talking about $1,300, $1,400 U.S. dollars to live very comfortably in a very, very, you know, nice part of town with all the amenities and not really watching your budget with going out the, and, and that kind of thing. So, you know, and also, like it's, it all depends what you want and what you're going for. So, like I said, where you go out to eat, how much AC you use, how much electricity, how big your apartment. But you, you actually, you could do it for five to six hundred dollars a month if you're really willing to live in a more local area and without more amenities and maybe be really careful with your electric. You could, you know, like in a one bedroom or a studio apartment, you really could do it. Um, now, adding on health care and things like that, that's going to get you up depending on how old you are. But it is feasible. It is feasible to go between five and seven hundred dollars, especially in a province area. You could do it. Now, you're going to have to work at it, but it's possible. Otherwise, you know, like a thousand bucks, I would say, would probably do you. And of course, you have to take into account the medical stuff we went into. But we'll talk more about that later. Right now, I got stuff to do and I got to enjoy. If I go out, we'll see here. The great day out here in Manila. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Be well. God bless.